so we want to start off with an easy example of calculate some partial derivatives. So I want to calculate all the second order partials for f of x and y is e to the x. Okay, so to calculate partials, what do you start with? One, yeah. one of the partials. Yeah, I mean, I want to get fxx, right, is something. fxy is something. fyx is something. And fyy is something, right? Kind of like foil. Oh, yeah, I suppose. All right, so what do you start with? fxx. Yeah, well, let's start with just the, the first order partials, right? So what's fx in this case? y e to the xy. Okay, so I get e to the xy times the derivative of the inside is y. Okay, what's fy? y squared to the xy. Oh, fy? Oh. Isn't it just the same as x e to the xy? Perfect, cool. All right. Now, if I want to do f x x, what do I do? Yeah, it's just y Alex, squared. wake y up. Squared. Well, y squared times e to the x y. Okay, e to the x y times y squared. Why didn't you use the product rule? Because y is a constant. Okay, either because y is a constant or because you forgot, right? <laughs> I'm hoping it was because y is a constant. All right. How about f y y? E to the x y times e to the x y times x squared. Careful kicking that thing. I bumped it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, try to catch it. Compensate. All right. So, how about f x y? Which one do you start with to get this? Okay, good. So I'm thinking, right, this is fx sub y. Okay, so I take that fx derivative partial, right? And then I need to differentiate this with respect to y. So what do you need? Yeah, now you need the product rule, right? Okay, so how does the product rule work again? Well, the derivative of e to the xy times y and then plus e to the xy times the derivative of y. Okay, so I need the partial with respect to y of e to the xy, right? Times y? Yeah. And then plus? Plus e to the, the xy. xy. Partial with respect to y of y. Which is? One. Okay. Okay, so what's the partial with respect to y of e to the xy? Uh, x times e to the xy. Perfect. So I got x, y, e to the x, y all told, right? Plus e to the x, y. Okay, and f, y, x. Maybe I should move, I guess. So f, y, x. Maybe I should think this is f, y sub x. Okay, so now I need to go to the other one. Right, so I should get the partial with respect to x of e to the xy times x times x plus e to the xy times one times one one. Good. Which equals the same thing as uh, which should hopefully be the same thing, right? Why was I expecting this to be the same thing? Because you just said it was the same thing. <laughs> Because I said it was the same thing when. When they're in the same direction. Everything's continuous same everywhere. Interior. Yeah, when everything's yeah, continuous same. everywhere, right? Yeah. Okay, so these two are continuous everywhere, and the results of these two are gonna be continuous everywhere, right? Okay, see that? How do I kind of know that to start with? It said in the book that. Uh, Products um, of continuous functions are always continuous, and, co and nested functions are always continuous. And 
And there's a third, but not quotients? Yeah. Yeah, so compositions of continuous functions are continuous. Sums. And sums of continuous functions and products of continuous functions are continuous. So this thing is a product of two continuous functions, right? X is continuous, Y is continuous. I'm multiplying them together, so I got a continuous thing. And then I'm putting that in the exponent of an E, right? So that's composition, right, with a continuous function, E to the whatever. Okay, so I'm good on continuity. I would be concerned, right, if I had, like, funny fractional powers or division or square roots or things like that, right? But here I'm pretty confident that everything's going to be fine because this is a nice continuous function and it's made out of really nice differentiable pieces. Cool? So I could have probably saved myself some time by just saying, okay, and this guy is going to be right, both fxy and fyx. So there are my partials in the end. Cool. Why did I get the y squared? Yeah. So when I took that x derivative, I got a y. Uh -huh. And then when I took the x derivative of this stuff again, I've got just a constant times the same thing I started with. So you get another y. Yeah. Uh -huh. So that's an x derivative, right? So I took the x derivative of this thing. So I got e to the stuff times the derivative with respect to x of x times y gives you a y. It's so like if you had e to the 2x and you brought down a 2, and then you would do it again, and then you would have 2 squared, and that would be 4. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. So we could ask ourselves, well, uh, let's Any other questions on this? So you're saying if you had, like, a polynomial on top and a polynomial on bottom, and they're both made up of x's and y's, you'd have to be wary about it being continuous because it's a quotient? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so polynomial of x's and y's, totally cool with. This is going to work. There's no problem. But if there's a polynomial on the bottom, then I've got a division. I have to worry about when the bottom is zero. And ascertaining when a polynomial of two variables is zero is a tricky, tricky thing.